welcome to the continuing session on job design, work and motivation. Now we will just have a re-look into what means by job in organizations. Jobs are task and authority relationships which defines an organization structure. So, they are jobs are the basic building blocks of this task authority structure and are microstructural elements to which employees most directly relate. So, if you just um, see the important points, salient points mentioned in this uh, definition is they are task and authority um, relationship. This word is very important authority relationship means the power that is there in the organization, the relationship of each job with the other job and it defines. So, the way a job is defined in the organization, it defines the structure of the organization and they are the jobs are the basic building blocks and which it is the microstructural elements to which the employees most directly relate to. So, when they enter an organization, what they first get to face in the organization are the jobs and um, jobs are usually um, designed to support and complement other jobs in the organization and they are interdependent in nature. And, um, and they are interdependent and designed to make a contribution to the um, organization's overall mission and goals. So, the, these are very um, important points about what, what we call jobs and why we are repeating it over here and because we are trying to move to a very important segment of our discussion which is called job design. So, when we are concentrating on what is job design, then we must first know like what is job and what is the relationship of job with the other jobs as present in the organization and what is the purpose of jobs in the organization. Only when that idea is clear to us, we will be able to uh, state or define clearly what is uh, job design. And one of the most important aspects of jobs in the organization is uh, differentiation and integration. These are the very important aspects of job uh, design as well as organizational designs. So, based on these parameters, based on these parameters, we try to design the jobs which are there in the organization. And there are different ways of job design. One is the traditional aspect of the job design and now we are looking into the modern aspects of um, job design. So, when the traditional aspect of job design focuses more on the uh, differentiation and integration aspects of the job. Uh, and if there is any problem in the differentiation and integration or both, it may lead to problems in um, human performance and behavior in the um, organization uh, and like also um, lack of performance and all these things, if there is a problem in the areas of differentiation, integration, either or both of them while designing the jobs in the traditional concept. And the traditional concept of job design, it's, it started with the uh, scientific management school and actually we have four, four aspects to it. And the first is the um, scientific management school and then is the job rotation and job enlargement as we discussed in the which we have already covered in the last class and job enrichment and beyond that is the <coughs> job characteristics model. So, first here we will try to discuss about the scientific management school 
and what is the what uh, and what it tells about work simplification we have already discussed about job rotation and enlargement and enrichment we are not going to touch upon that again we will then move to the job characteristics model in with this lecture so when we are talking of like the um, scientific uh, management school so the most important part of it if you see over here is work simplification so work simplification is the key word in the scientific management school and um, which leads to like which leads to your like standardization and narrow and explicit uh, specification of uh, task activities for workers so and it use work so in that case what happens if every every step is standardized and it's well defined it's broken into small small parts then what happens like people from any ethnicity or whatever cultural backgrounds they are coming from they can uh, perform that job because everything is very clearly defined so and it leads to production efficiency because you know what exactly you have to perform and then you perform accordingly because everything is stated very clearly to you but and the, it it uh, the negative of this concept of uh, scientific management school of work simplification is that sometimes over simplify too much simple wor work leads to boredom of people and and um, it, it ignores it denies the human capacity of thought and ingenuity it 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 tells like everything has to be stated very clearly and the role of the hr manager over here is of course to define the task as specifically as possible through time and motion study and all these factors so that everything gets stated very clearly and you perform accordingly like an, another machine performing a particular work and in that case the thought process of the employees is denied it's um, and, and and it may lead to um, boredom now to deal with these boredom factors what what is the answer to these boredom factors that we have is the next type of job design which is job enlargement and job enrichment which we have discussed in the previous lecture and job enrichment of course um, like has it some drawbacks in the sense like is it an, is it worthy to enrich every job possible or is it the correct answer to enrich jobs because you cannot ever you, you cannot claim that you have satisfied a person by enriching a job because the more you enrich people in many cases starts demanding more so these could be the problems of enrichment next what we try to concentrate over here is a like the concept of uh, job um, characteristics model which combines enrichment and um, enlargement so when we are talking of the job characteristics model so it tries to see the job based on certain job characteristics and it tries to relate it with the certain psychological motivational and satisfaction performance and it sees what are the job outcomes related to it and what is the role of the growth need strength when when we are trying to talk about like what is the individual's growth need strength and how it influences the um, whole understanding of the job based on these job characteristics so the core dimensions of job characteristics as mentioned are of course your variety in the task possible so like 
the, the wide variety of things are, are, are a ta or which needs to be done as a part of a wide range of operations that needs to be done as a part of that job and um, so so it, it it relates to it relates to the um, it relates to the job in enlargement concept when we are talking of autonomy it relates to the extent to which job holders have a say in the scheduling of the work and uh, selection of its equipment which is more of the job enrichment concept and task identities extent to which the um, job holders do an uh, entire piece of work and identify with the results of their um, efforts. So, it is again uh, part of your en enlargement uh, and enrichment thing. So, these will define the characteristics of the job, but these characteristics of the job is again dependent on factors like uh, feedback that you receive about a particular job and dealings with others, the degree to which a job holder can establish informal relationship um, with other workers on the job and friendship opportunities like whether um, you have friendship opportunities about informal relationship with workers on the other job. So, um, So, so what you, what you find over here is, um, if you see this picture, the core job characteristics are the um, skill variety, task identity and task significance, it which will lead to the psychological state of experienced meaningfulness of the work autonomy will lead to the sense of responsibility for the work outcomes and feedback from the job will be the knowledge of the actual result of the work activities and the outcomes will be high internal work motivation, growth satisfaction, general job satisfaction and high work effectiveness. Um, but, but is again what you find over here like though it appears to be a very straight relationship between the core job characteristics, critical psychological states that generates and the outcomes that follow, but it is moderated by the three very important factors like the background knowledge and skill of the employees, the growth needs strength and the context um, satisfaction. So, when these things are playing a role in between it will moderate the strength of the relationship between the job characteristics, the psychological states it generates and whether it will lead to the outcome as mentioned in the right hand side part of the diagram. Because see if a person suppose in the growth needs strength and it is a moderator for autonomy. So, autonomy will be dependent on like how much I like in autonomy, like if, if I am a worker who likes to be guided and I, 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 um, autonomy, I, if, if I am to take a decision by myself, it is a threat for me, then thinking like giving autonomy to all the employees will lead to um, better sense of better responsibility and high growth strength may not be always the result that we get because some people may prefer autonomy some prefer, people may not prefer autonomy based, based on their own personal preferences and growth needs strength. So, we have to take those things into consideration while we are designing jobs based on this job characteristics model. And what it leads to is a motivational potential score MPS which we call which is based on task variety plus task identity plus task significance divided by 3 into autonomy into feedback is the motivational potential score for a particular task that we get over here. But while designing this job characteristics, 
if you find reef also like it 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 is very time consuming in certain senses and like we have to uh, tell like what what is the uh, find out what are the different varieties of skills which are there then how to deal with the um, task identity how to realize whether this task is significant for the person or not so it requires a detailed study and job analysis of the job per se to um, and to map it to the different growth needs of the individual and find out its implication for the psychological states before we are to design a job based on this job characteristics model. Implication of this job characteristics model for the organization is of course like when you are talking of engagement these days, employee engagement and how we how it will um, it is dependent on the characteristics of the job. Then we have to find out through surveys like what are the elements in the job or what, what do the employees desire, uh, what do the employees want from the job so that they feel like if given those things pro pro provided these things are given to them, they can work extra mile for the organization and they will be able to um, perform better in the organization. And we have to inbuild those things within the job itself. So, in that way, so the nature of the job itself will motivate person for engagement in the organization. So, that is one of the implications of this job characteristics model. Next, we move on to the next lab of discussion, which is based on alternate uh, alternative approaches to uh, job design in alternative approaches to uh, job design what happens is like we are more concerned here with the issues which are not directly related with the task per se but contextual factors human behavioral related factors which may affect the interpretation of the in the job by the or the work by the individual and based on those things we are trying to design jobs by giving more importance to the interpretation of the job by the people and we are we are trying to tell it about we are more concerned about the quality of work life of the people and we are trying to classify it into like um, into different headings and the first of course is the socio technical system design and where we are trying to focus on the human technological and the um, organizational interface which leads to like a better quality of work life. So, what, what happens over here is um, here what we are more concerned about the interaction amongst these three factors major pillars human technological and organizational interface which may lead to different interpretations about the job. One of the way of interpreting this um, job is of course when, when we deal with the social information processing approach. In the social information processing approach um, to job design, we it, it suggests that the individual needs task perceptions and reactions are socially construed um, or constructed uh, realities which means that how how much importance we give to a job um, how we perceive that particular portion of the job and how i orient my individual needs around the job all these will depend on the feedback that i get from the society about the importance of the job um, for the society the status that is given about the job holders in a particular society, the respect that you get from the society 
and so on and so forth. So, this, this is called the social information processing to um, jump and that is how we try to perceive the importance of the job in our life. Next important uh, alternative approach is um, to job design is the ergonomic approach. And this is one of the important ways of um, defining job and in ergonomic approach what is done is we draw from we try to design the job by drawing our knowledge from different job design approaches and we try to find out the positive and negative present in um, each of these approaches and then try to orient ourselves towards that and we try to adapt some of these ap positive some parts of it and then we try to make design a job in that regard. So, the alternative like in this ergonomic approach the first approach is of course, the which is taken care of is the mechanistic approach which we which comes from mechanical engineering. And the po you find over here we have listed down both the positive outcomes and negative outcomes um, related. So, when it is a mechanical engineering thing we, we find like there is a decreased training time, higher personnel utilization levels, lower likelihood of error, less chance of mental overload and lower stress levels. Because we are trying to state each and every job very clearly it is well defined, but it may lead to like lower job satisfaction and motivation and higher absenteeism. So, again like when we talk of a motivational approach which is uh, derived from industrial psychology. So, again you find it is a um, higher job satisfaction lower absenteeism and greater job involvement, but negatives of this are increased training time and lower personal utilization levels, greater chance of errors and mental overload and stress. Now, now if you are combining the some aspects of this motivational approach with that of the mechanistic approach, maybe the combination of these two is going to give a better job design and you have to see the nature of the job in your organization, how are the people, what do the people expect from you as a part of the job design and you may combine these two together processes to design your own job in the organization. There is a biological approach which deals with like um, less of physical effort, le less physical fatigue, fewer health complaints and medical incidents, lower absenteeism. But again um, it is um, higher financial cost due to changes in equipment or job environment. So, you have to see like what you want to um, give the, to the people uh, as a part of the quality of work life that we are discussing over here. If it is less of physical effort and uh, physical fatigue, fewer health complaints, if your focus is on this then, then you have to design the job according to the uh, biological approach. And um, another approach is um, that of the perpetual motor approach, which is again based on experimental psychology. You see, it's uh, like lower likelihood of error, lower likelihood of accidents, and less chance of mental stress, lower training time, higher personal utilization levels. But on the negatives, there is lower job satisfaction and lower motivation. So. Um, well, again, it, it depends on the philosophy that you believe in for what you uh, want from the job or what you, what you see that the people expect from your job and what, what is the ultimate outcome that you um, define for the organization's effectiveness will affect the um, uh, type of job design and approaches um, taken for it. So, 
based on this, um, what, what we go for now is um, another type of um, alternate uh, uh, job design where we uh, job design at the um, group level which which is called the um, self managed teams now self managed teams is a small group of individual people who are empowered to perform certain activities based on procedures and decisions made within the group and with minimum outside uh, directions so like it could be a project team, it could be task forces, quality circles and new venture teams where, um, where the teams themselves are um, more responsible for, for the work from the start to the um, end of it. So here what factors uh, are more important over here is the autonomy part of it and the um, Comple complexity of the task and and uh, your variety of task uh, skill needed uh, and how you identify with the task given at hand all these things will determine the um, self managed teams and the level also the level of the knowledge and competency of the people their belief in their self efficacy to solve complex problems at hand without having directions from outside so for self managed teams it's mo it's more important to have matured people with a strong self efficacy ability to set proper goals and uh, proper self leadership qualities all these things are very important for self managed teams so other alternative um, work arrangements are of course like um, when we are talking of um, when we are talking of this improving job context so 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 we are focusing more into like compressed work week uh, or flexi time, uh, flex time or like um, job sharing. So, so these are like um, important uh, aspects of um, job design that we are facing over here. So, um, the, these are um, come up with uh, emerging issues like changing pattern of human resources and the importance given to both family life and work life realization of the factors that people have numerous roles to play and beyond only their work role in the organization and they have to play all these roles well so based on these realizations some flexibility has been brought in the job design and and also on the organization's capacity to um, pay for uh, a certain employee the scarcity of resources like you, you you have to work through multiple locations and all these factors and one person has to attend to multiple locations so if these according to the changing nature of the job changing nature of the um, environment in which the organization is functioning all these contextual factors affect the designing of the job and some of these are of course like um, what we talk of compressed work week like um, working for longer hours for four days and maybe 10 hours or so and then enjoying three days of um, rest where you can take up your own personal works then uh, telecommuting then you have uh, flex time where employees determine which is the time which is more comfortable for them to come to the office and job sharing where two or more people share one job or, or you can uh, talk of like, um, um, like technology at the workplace like when we are talking of um, 
when you are talking of virtual work offices and we are a related concept that we are talking of is of course the stress that you face as a part of that uh, over utilization of technology. If you are interacting in virtual team then, then it is very important. It creates, it creates its own challenges, you are never meeting the, uh, your other team members physically face to face, but you are meeting them through um, your, comp your telecommunications telecommun and all these things computers and so so you have to adjust to these challenges motivational aspects become different so these are different challenges that are there for the um, job designing aspect next of course which is a very important aspect of um, job design as such which is called task revision so in task revision what happens like um, I, initially you find like some jobs are not well defined. So, it has to well defined uh, uh, so that uh, employees are not able to perform well or it is it's not suiting the purpose of the organization and then you have to redefine that job. In that case what happens you have to go for a task revision and task revision has an effect on the performance of the individuals. Like if you find like when if the job roles are correctly specified role then standard role behavior is ordinarily good performance. But if you are going for some extra role behavior if somebody is performing beyond what is demanded then it leads to ex excellent performance. But if somebody is count, doing counter role behavior which is behavior which is not expected as a part of the job, it may lead to poor performance like deviance and dissent and grievance. But in case of incorrectly specified role then what happens the standard role behavior what is expected of you is will, will not be performed well it will be poorly performed. Extra role behavior also because you do not know what you exactly have to perform as a part of your role, this also gets very poor performance. So, but when it is counter role behavior, it is written like it is excellent performance because that, that will tell you this counter role behavior where, where the task is incorrectly defined and what um, revision it needs to be made so that uh, it gets properly defined according to the organization's need or the human being's need and it may lead to role innovation. Another part of um, this alternative way for job designing is skill development where you try to upgrade the skill levels and competencies of the people present within your organization um, so that um, they get to fit. Um, they develop their competencies and they can fit into the any type of job which is there within the organization. So, these are important like your issues, alternative work arrangements that can be done to improving the jobs context. Uh, so, when we are talking of total quality management and uh, job design. So, what it, what it becomes much important um, over here is like um, what it becomes much important over here is like it a uh, combination of the ideas of technical knowledge and human knowledge. So, it helps the employees to it helps the employees to handle the complexities of the job and variabilities in the work technologies. And yeah, so, when there is an integration of technology and the employee is considered, the employee's job is often redesigned to enhance this interaction. And in the present system, in the global environment, so in the socio-technical system design has been incorporated in the total quality management approach. So, that 
what what we are trying to do is we are trying to map the needs of the job with the how to do it in a better way and if it is to be done in a better way what what are the factors which will lead which will help the employee to do those things in a better way all these things are mapped together and then then you design a job accordingly like what what should be provided ultimately what you get is what should be provided to the employee so that their needs and their growth is taken care of in the organization and 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 they they are at ease to perform well in the organization so now when we are talking of this global environment let's have a look into the international perspective on job design um, because um, yeah accord people the they they will find there is a difference in the how different uh, emphasis um, emphasis vary on the different aspects of the job based on the where 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 it is situated so you'll find first there is a japanese approach to as per perspective which um, like it depends upon the national culture per se where it emphasizes strategic level and collective and cooperative work environment so and like um, it emphasizes more on uh, performance um, accountability and other um, other um, or self directedness in the def um, defining of the work it believes in like um, lean production so it's what's more important on the word over here is um, committed employees with ever increasing and expanding responsibility to achieve zero waste 100% good product delivered on time every time so if you focus on this definition per se of uh, lean production it is very challenging to design a job accordingly uh, it's very challenging from the perspective of socio technical design to design a job accordingly because see number of question marks are arising over here number of important questions to be answered over here committed employees how do you get committed employees what makes what organization has to provide to um, to get committed employees and to keep their levels of commitment very high so what motivational factors you introduce with ever increasing and expanding responsibilities so to achieve zero waste 100% good product delivered on time every time so this is actually a very like if you see it the words per se so it's it's very like if not taken care of with the proper training with proper motivation to achieve this target this may be stressful for the employees like every time you have to perform and uh, you have to perform 100% correct with um, zero waste and you have to be flawless sort of thing and it's really very challenging for the employees to meet this target and your responsibilities are going to increase and increase every time so if the employees are not becoming self motivated intrinsically motivated to achieve this target then pressures from up or from the leaders or whatever you tell to achieve this target may may be somewhat stressful for the employee so you have to design your job accordingly with and you have to enrich your job accordingly so that the people are self motivated to achieve this target so so here lies the importance of the socio technical design and how how you imbibe the principles of this design in the total quality management next see when we are going to the german approach the german approach is like initially it was technocentric which was placing technology and engineering at the center of job design decisions so so more in, emphasis was given on the technology aspect of it but now it is shifting to anthropocentric approach which is placing human consideration at the center of job design and it is um, trying to design the consider the anthropocentric job design from two levels one is at the individual level which talks of the practicability of the job based on the whether it's practic 
Humphrey practically is to um, perform a job in the way desired, like technical, anthropocentric, and psychophysical problems. This, imp this is very important. The psychophysical problems which may arise about like performing the job, worker satisfaction. So, socio-psychological and economic problems which deals with the which comes from the area of occupational psychology and so forth. So, how far satisfied the worker will be while performing a particular type of job. So, again in groups we are talking of levels like endurability and acceptability of that particular work to at the um, group level. So, when these are considerations, your job designs will vary in that way. The Scandinavian approach is towards more of high degrees of worker control and good social support system for workers. Now, uh, its focus is on uh, workers should be safe mentally, physically and provided opportunities for involvement, job satisfaction and personal development. Now, if that is the focus of your job design, then you, you, you will be designing your job in such way that workers get more control, they have more say in the job that is that, that they are doing and then you design accordingly like um, how you sh your job should be looking like, um, then what is the level of control that the um, employee is going to exert on the different tasks performed by the individual. So, these are important considerations for your workers control and social support regarding the, regarding the work that you are doing. This may again come under the domain of when we are talking of like work design and uh, well-being. So, when we are talking of work design and well-being, the factors which are more related over here are increased worker control, reduced worker uncertainty, managing conflict and task job demands. So, when we are talking of control, it is giving workers the opportunity to control several aspects of the work in the workplace. Um, designing machines with optimum response time and ranges. So, and um, implementing a performance monitoring system uh, as a source of relevant feedback. So, when we are talking of, when, when we are talking of uncertainty, when you are talking of uncertainty, so we have to talk about the uh, like uh, 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 providing employees with the um, timely feedback and, and complete information needed from the job. We have to talk about the less of ambiguity in the job present and like we have to make them acquainted with the um, like communication more like while, while you are handing over the charges then improving communication and the shift change and like increasing your um, employees access to information sources. Now, if all these things are there like especially the communication at shift change time and access to information sources and uh, then proper com timely and complete information needed for the work, then this will reduce the uncertainty and if the uncertainty is reduced, the stress level gets um, reduced also. So, next what we would like how we can reduce conflict over here is participative decision making and supportive supervisor style and sufficient resources available to meet work demands. This again is a very challenging part for the organization to play like um, um, how do we get sufficient resources and how much sufficient is sufficient. So, and how do you reduce conflict regarding that? So, this a proper job design based on the four approaches that we have di discussed under ergonomics may be helpful in 
in dealing with um, these aspects and task and job design is when we are talking of um, like enhancing the core job characteristics that we discussed in the skill variety task identity and task significance and not patterning service work after assembly line work because this this nature of the job is very different from the assembly line of work and so it is not possible to do it in that way and it requires a, a different way of looking at this type of um, service uh, work. So, if all these things are taken care of then then it may lead to a work design which which is uh, um, leading to employee well being. So, we, we will uh, look into a factor model of um, elaborated model of job which considers um, designing of the job at the individual and at the group level which will keep in view the various uh, factors that influence the um, and the constraints in the job design. So, these factors could be internal or external to the organization. So, like environmental uncertainty and all these factors. So, and so uh, by considering these factors, um, we can take many ways to manipulate <coughs> the job characteristics present and then by promoting cultural changes and all these factors behavior modification techniques. Because see if you have discussed like till now we have discussed many of the characteristics job characteristics persons uh, like expectations from the job uh, perception of the job which varies from area to area uh, in the uh, per different persons expectations patterns of viewing jobs are different. So, so it, it depends on so many of internal and external factors and the, as an organization we have to take different measures not a single measure is going to work. Uh, we have to take a combination of um, measures to find out what is the appropriate job design for performing a particular type of work which makes the um, employee um, like um, identify with the aspects of the job and understand it and perform it well. So, it could be those actions could be based on changing the culture, it could be uh, removing the perceptual biases or conducting behavior modification programs, it could be anything or it could be combination of all these things also. Uh, so, if you see this model, it talks of the antecedents of like the job which are external factors um, like environmental uncertainty then available technology. It talks of internal organizational factors also the management style and technology and task and knowledge management ergonomics, organizational design, the leadership styles and culture present, workplace spirituality and high performance your um, like um, preference for high performance improvement um, may lead to like um, your expanded job characteristics both at the um, individual and group level and societal social level like um, individual level is job control, skill variety, performance feedback, emotional demands from the job. And so, this is very important emotionally how we get attached to the job and how what is the emotional labor that is uh, demanded of you as a part of performing that job. Opportunity for skill acquisition, variable performance linked be flexible working hours at the group, group level is your uh, team autonomy, team feedback, team skill variety, creativity. At the social level is how this job itself is establishing a social capital and it, it 
intergroup processes are encouraged, whether it meets the social demands of the person, because these are very important, whether you are allowed to form groups, whether you you are allowed to form friendship groups, whether you are allowed to interact with other people or not, means whether your cognitive social capital and, and, there, and whether the structure of the organization, the design of the organization pr promotes these interactions or not. So, this will lead to uh, like outcomes which is uh, motivation or quick response learning and development and innovation, creativity, highly performing environment, which will again lead to uh, some visible outcomes in the terms of like high productivity, customer satisfaction and reduced accident or at the individual level like that of increased performance, rational decision making, group effectiveness. Uh, or at the social level in the terms of collective representation, emotional experience collectively within group solidarity. These, these are the factors, these, these, are, uh, these are what you can observe from outside as a result of these in outcomes which, which is the first degree outcome which is formed which may lead to these observable outcomes from outside. And again this outcome may again affect the antecedents like if you are motivated enough then or there is a quick response then high performance environment all these things may affect how you interpret this internal and the um, external environment and it may again lead to influencing these job characteristics so what you can understand from this model is um, of course like like you have to be always monitoring and trying to take an audit of like whether your job characteristics are timely whether it is meeting the uh, needs of the antecedents and whether it is leading to the development of these proactive performances which may lead to these organizational outcomes. So, it is not a one time activity that is to be done, but this exercise job design has to be reviewed and from time to time it has to be audited from time to time to maintain its timeliness and to um, then change it if possible accordingly, upgrade it, change it according to the changing demands and then make it well defined. We will then take to the questions which is like what is job analysis, describe job design in the light of job analysis. What is job design, discuss methods of designing job range and job depth, explain the relationship of total quality management and job design with a um, suitable model. So, we will move forward with that. And we will go to the next uh, discussion which is on reward and performance uh, management and that again this job design, how well it is designed, what what aspects of the individual needs it is taken care of, all these factors will have a reflection in the performance of the individuals and the rewards which is decided for the employees thereafter. So, each aspect of this like whatever we are learning till now is going to affect the next or the other related discussions and it is very important for us to know each of these things in detail and understand the importance of the factors that we are discussing in relation to the other OB variables. Thank you.